Hello and welcome to this video. This video is on EU Directive 2010 stroke 63 stroke EU and it's on the protection of animals used for scientific purposes. EU Directive 2010 stroke 63 stroke EU has 56 recitals, 66 articles and 8 annexes. And what you can see before you is the front cover of the directive which is published in the official journal of the European Union. In this video we're not going to look at any of the 56 recitals, however we are going to look at a fair proportion of the 66 articles and the 8 annexes. The articles and the annexes are the legally binding parts of the directive. I'm now going to give a quick precy of the very recent history of this directive and how it's being transposed into our national legislation. I found the best site that explained this was from the Academy of Medical Sciences and the next couple of slides will be from their page on this particular topic. From halfway down this slide it reads, Why has the UK law on the use of animals in research been revised? The European Directive on the Protection of Animals Used for Experimental and Other Scientific Purposes came into force in September 2010. The directive is intended to harmonise animal research standards and practices across Europe and makes provisions for many aspects of research involving animals. The next paragraph reads, This process involves the alignment of the UK's existing legislation and that is the Animal Scientific Procedures Act 1986, with the new directive. The Animals in Scientific Procedures Division of the Home Office are leading this work. The Home Office ran a consultation on options for the directive's transposition from June to September 2011. This slide, taken from the same website, talks about the activities in 2012 and I'm just going to pick it up two-thirds of the way down the slide in December. And it reads, In December, the Animal Scientific Procedures Act 1986 Amendment Regulation 2012 were laid in Parliament. The regulations were unanimously agreed by a committee of MPs after a short debate on the 3rd of December and were subsequently passed after a debate in the House of Lords on, the t on sorry, December 13th and they were signed into law by the Home Office Minister, Lord Taylor of Holbeach. To end this very brief precy of how the Act is, well, the Directive is progressing and how it is being transposed into our own legislation, I will end this precy, as I said, on the last paragraph of this slide. It reads, Activities in 2013. It reads, the majority of the provisions in the revised ASPA, obviously it's had to be revised because of the new directive in the EU, it goes on, came into force on the 1st of January 2013. The Home Office is now consulting on various documents which detail how the new legislation will be put into practice. And this last slide shows one of those documents and I will be referring to this document when I look at the articles in the EU Directive. So this is the first article, and remember the articles are legally binding. They're usually called the enacting terms, along with the annexes of the EU Directive. Uh, this one says, Chapter 1, General Provisions, Article 1, Subject Matter and Scope. It's not a particularly interesting article, but it's just laying out what's in the rest of the directive and what the rest of the directive is to cover. Uh, it just reads, this directive establishes measures for the protection of animals used for scientific or educational purposes. To that end, it lays down rules on the following. A. The replacement and reduction of the use of animals in procedures and the refinement of the breeding, accommodation, care and use of animals in procedures. B. The origin, breeding, marking, care and accommodation and killing of animals. C. The operation of breeders, suppliers and users. 
Uh, D. The evaluation and authorization of projects involving the use of animals in procedures. Uh, like I say, I'm not going to go through every article, but I thought I'd at least start with Article 1, just so you can get the gist of the directive. But generally, I'm just going to be concentrating on actual animal welfare issues and topics that will be interested to the animal rights community rather than if you are an actual vivisector and you're looking at the act to see what you have to do to get a project license and things like that. I mean I might look at that a little bit but not very much. The second part of Article 1 reads this directive shall apply where animals are used or intended to be used in procedures or bred specifically so that their organs or tissues may be used for scientific purposes. This directive shall apply until the animals referred to in the first subparagraph have been killed, rehomed or returned to a suitable habitat or husbandry system. Article 2, Stricter National Measures Part 1 reads, Member States may, while observing the general rules laid down in the TFEU, which stands for the Treaty on the Functioning of the European Union, maintain provisions in force on the 9th of November 2010 aimed at ensuring more extensive protection of animals falling within the scope of this directive than those contained in this directive. What this means is if you nationally had higher standards uh, before the 9th of November 2010 you can keep those higher standards. For instance, we had higher standards on using stray cats and dogs in experiments than other countries. And this directive is just saying you can keep those higher standards. The second paragraph just reads, Before 1st January 2013, Member States shall inform the Commission about such national provisions, i.e. if you intend to keep uh, higher standards for experimenting on feral cats and dogs, for example, and then it just says the Commission shall bring this to the attention of other member states, so it's just going to tell other member states that you're going to have slightly higher standards or higher standards on a particular area of animal experimentation. Uh, I think this is a very mean little article, this one. So, I mean, people joining the EU, which may want higher standards of protection for animals or even if like the UK wants higher standards uh, unless they were actually in force before the 9th of November 2010 you're not going to be able to have higher standards part 2 of article 2 reads when acting poussant which I percent or I don't know I've never heard of that word so basically Get it out, if it's an unusual word. Anyway, I've looked it up and it means conformably. So when acting conform, when you're conforming to paragraph 1, a member state shall not prohibit or impede the supply or use of animals bred or kept in another member state in accordance with this directive, nor shall it prohibit or impede the placing on the market of products developed with the use of such animals in accordance with this directive. Obviously, this is an absolutely awful part of the EU directive, and I will just give a few comments on it now. Firstly, when it says a member state shall not prohibit or impede the supply or use of animals bred or kept in another member state in accordance with this directive, that means nationally, if we voted to, say, stop the supply of beagles to Greece or Spain or some other country like that, even though we had all agreed about it, in this country, the EU says we still wouldn't be able to stop the supply. This is one of the reasons why the UK Independence Party, which is also known as UKIP for short, wants to lessen the power that the European Union has over us in our own country. What the second part of this directive, this article, means is not, it reads, nor shall it prohibit or impede the placing on the market of products developed with the use of such animals in accordance with this directive. 
So say if we had found out in Germany that they had abused the animals in some unacceptable way to us here in the UK, and we wanted to prohibit the article that they had been testing, I don't know, say it might be a shampoo or something like that, they would say, we are not allowed to prohibit, we must allow that article to come into the UK market. So, in that sense, we don't really have independence over our own destiny. We have to abide by what the EU says. And again, this is why UKIP does not like the EU. Article 3 of the directive is just about definitions. I think I'm only going to have a look at two definitions in this piece on this EU directive. Uh, the first one is defining procedure and the other one is competent authority and I'm going to do that later on. Anyway, it says procedure means any use, invasive or non-invasive, of an animal for experimental or other scientific purposes with known or unknown outcome or educational purposes which may cause the animal a level of pain, suffering, distress or lasting harm equivalent to or higher than that caused by the introduction of a needle in accordance with good veterinary practice. And at the bottom it says, but this excludes the killing of animals solely for the use of their organs or tissues. So they are not regarded as procedures. Article 4 of the directive is a little bit problematic and a little bit ambiguous to exactly what it means. but And it brings in another article, Article 13 as well, to complicate it a little bit. So you have to bear with me while I explain this article. The title of it is Principle of Replacement Reduction and Refinement and part one of the article reads Member States shall ensure that wherever possible and that is the problematic part of the article a scientifically satisfactory method or testing strategy not entailing the use of live animals shall be used instead of a procedure. Uh, parts 2 and 3 of this article are self-explanatory, so we just go to part 4 and then it says This article shall, in the choice of methods, be implemented in accordance with Article 13. So we're going to have to have a quick look at Article 13 now to see what they mean. OK, here is Article 13 and its title is Choice of Methods and we're interested only in part 1 of this article. And we're not really interested in the first part either. It says, without prejudice to national legislation prohibiting certain types of methods. So certain places like the UK might have banned a particular animal test or procedure which was in place before the 9th of November 2010, as stated before. Well, you can keep that. That's what this part, first part is saying. Anyway, we're not interested in that, and I can't th think of any examples about where we had banned a play, uh, an experiment or a procedure, whatever you like to call it, in this country that they hadn't in Europe. But anyway, but what we're really interested in is the second part of this paragraph. And it reads, Member States shall ensure that a procedure is not carried out if another method or testing strategy for obtaining the results sought, not entailing the use of a live animal, is recognised under the legislation of the Union. So that's perfectly clear and not ambiguous. However, if we look at this pyrogenicity slide, you can see it's got the rabbit pyrogen test, and this test has been validated. It's called the human white blood in vitro pyrogen test. There is actually four others of these tests as well that have all been validated to test for pyrogenicity. Um, under regulatory status, it says no information, so perhaps it's not been regulated by the EU, but let's imagine it is for this example. Uh, under Article 13, you definitely have to use this, but under the other article, it was saying wherever possible. Now, what could be the reason for them to put in wherever possible? One reason might be because, say, if the human blood in vitro pyrogen test had got full regulatory status, and I think it will one day because it has been valid validated by the EU already, 
Uh, well, maybe they might be out of stock. One hopes that it wouldn't be because they were too expensive compared to the rabbit or anything. But wherever possible. So that's the only excuse I could think is because it had got regulatory approval, but say a particular test, in vitro test, was out of stock and they couldn't get hold of it. This gives the vivisectors the permission to use, say in this example, the rabbit. And that way they're not breaking the law. So I think that's why they've put in wherever possible.